There we go. Okay, guys. So just going over some slight differences between 2.7 and 3.6 versions of Python. Um, raw input is only for 2.7 and 3.6. You don't have to have raw input. You can just have input. Why do we even make it raw? So it's for a raw string, and I'll explain. So in, in any sort of, if you're printing anything or if you're trying to do the file path for anything, if you go R, parenthesis, or I'm sorry, quotation mark, and then your C dash colon blah, 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 blah. You don't need the double backslashes. You guys remember from Python where you had to have the double backslashes for Pygame? If you have this R in front of it, you don't need it because Python reads it as this is a raw string. Everything in between the next, the um, apostrophe, the quotation marks, is a string and it basically will ignore the fact that it's a, a, a back, sleek colon backslash, you know, desktop. Oh, it's not going to read it as backslash D. It ignores it because it's a raw string, raw string. Because backslash is how you, like... It's how you add a new character, a yeah. new line, a new tab, or something like that. Yeah. So that's what this is for. Wait, we use this a lot. If I thought, dude, wasn't a backslash like... like wasn't there like um? Did you have? Did you have to put like? Let's say you use a double quotation mark at the beginning of a string. Yeah. And then you had to put a double quotation mark in the string, but you didn't want to. Yeah, that's how you did it. Okay. Yeah. Or you could do backslash n for a new line, a backslash t for a tab. I don't. Um, I don't mind that. But yeah, but you can also do a raw string. You can also do it with. Or you can do a backslash backslash. You just want to put a backslash in. If you do three like three quotation marks like that it's again another raw string and it ignores any sort of backslash n or backslash that it just reads it as a raw string so a raw string is um a string with no escape care it's not read with any escape characters it's pure text and nothing more right so it doesn't read into it any more than than whatever um and this is actually in college i had to do this to all of my code i would write my code and then copy and paste it and then i would do I would print this so that the instructor could read the code and then um, run it. Oh, that would, oh, okay, so you just printed all your code. I printed all the code, he would read it, run the actual code, and then um, he would grade it. And then for tests, like I said, it was all handwritten. And he gave you 100%. He's a cool teacher, right? Uh, he would actually, yeah, I liked him, actually. He was um, a young TA going for a master's or something. He had a big, like, square beard. He always said concatenation. He would always, instead of concatenation, like shorting, he would go, concatenation. What does that even mean? I never heard that word. Concatenation is adding strings together as opposed to adding numbers together. Oh. So, anyway, um, variable names. Went over that. So, types of variables. What are some types of variables we can have? String. String, yes. Integer. Integer, yes. Flotation device. Float. <laughs> yes. What else? Um, <laughs> you can have lists, you can have sets, you can have tuples. We're going to go over tuples. Um, not in the review. You can have a dictionary, you can have an image, you can have a bunch of stuff. The common ones are string, integers, and floats, lists, and probably dictionaries. Um, one thing that I find very useful is if you're switching from an integer to a string or a string to an integer because they're typing something in and you can't remember. Basically, if you're getting an error saying I can't add an integer to a string, if you want to figure out at what point you're having an issue where one thing is changing from an integer to a string, you can type, type, and then the variable name, and it will tell you class int or class str, and you go, oh, so in this section of my code, for whatever reason, it's going from an integer to a string, and I don't want it to. So we're gonna put it back as an integer and then your code will work. Yeah, Ryan. Anyone ever understood speaking of classes? Classes. Like why do you ever use a class? Why not just use just stick with functions and then you so I actually emailed that me emailed Dr. Stalin that exact question um, mm -hmm. because someone asked me and he goes, You can argue and I think he gave me a link to something that said you can argue that you never ever ever need to use classes in coding. You can just use, you know, just variable names. So quarter side, you know, who are who, who did I teach classes to? It depends on it, w it depended on the actual class and how much time we had in the semester. So basically a class is a virtual object. Uh, it's used in object-oriented programming, which is huge in, I think, Java, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it is. 
Okay. okay. Um, and it basically will create a virtual object and you can manipulate that. Um, you can also, instead of having the object, just have variables. Which one's better? Mm, but yeah, he yeah, does have a point. You don't actually need to have um, classes at all if you don't want to. Um, types of variables. Okay, mathematical operations. What is that? What? I don't know what that is. You've never seen that before. It's addition. <laughs> That's subtraction. Yeah. Is that a star? That's a star. That's multiplication. That's a divide. That's a, that's a square root or something? I don't know. It's not a remainder. No, that's the, that's the percent sign. Percent sign is remainder. What the heck is the double divide? I've seen that. You guys have never seen that? I've never seen that. That is... Oh. Um, so if you have something like 8.5, it rounds it down for you to 8. Oh. I, so if you have 8.9, what does it Wouldn't it be 8.5 would round up to 9? No, it always rounds it down. I'm going to double check so that. <laughs> yeah, so it's integer division slash floored quotient. Oh, floor. Okay, so it just, yeah, uh, it's a floor. Yeah, so. Is there a ceiling one? Uh, not according to this, but if you do math, you can import math. But you can't always. Because math is just nice. And then you do math.ceiling, and it will make. It'll. Go from 8.5 to 9 or 8.2 to 9 or whatever. Yeah, it'll up it to the near. It'll round up regardless of whatever. Sure, they have a built in function to round down, but not to round up. Yeah. Most of the time, but very rarely do you want to round. I don't. You want to round up, I guess. I don't know. But I'm just going off what the book says. Um, oh, that actually had every, the other couple that I wanted. Star, star. What's star, star? Star, star, yes. What's star, star? Exponential. What? Exponential. Exponential. This one is really big, right? I'd really the remainder. The remainder one, because you can use that for prime numbers. You can use that for even or odd numbers. Mm -hmm. So it's. I'd recommend being used with that one. It is exponent modulus remainder. Okay, so we got through all those. Uh, mathematical operations. So, do you guys have any questions on anything for Tuesday for today? Want me to go over variable names, types of variables, or mathematical operations? Zach? How do I open up the second part of Python? Yeah. Control, Control N. Control N? Oh, wait. That opens up a new file. That's what I and that's where you write all of your lo long lines of code versus the yeah, but I can, I can versus the shell. Oh, okay. So I'm in the shell. So Control N? That it opens up. It's basically a blank text document. And that's no, where you start writing your code. We'll go to file and then new file. Hold on. Am I even in the right thing? I have no idea. Let me you're look. You're in spider. It looks like. I'm, not. I'm spider. You're not spider. Oh, you're, oh, so you're opening up. No, it's not the right thing. <laughs> so you don't. So you want this. Oh, the idle. So we're going to pin that to start. And that's. Do you get it? That's pretty good. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Dolter. You are welcome. So this is called the shell, and this is basically you can only do line by line. So two plus two is four. Wow. And then if you hit Control N, this is where you write define functions or whatever. One hand, you are really impressive, Dolter. And then it's because I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, man. Yeah, it is because you. So wait, how would you print something then with a 3.6? So you just type like print, I'm gonna make sure I get parenthesis, this. and then whatever you want. So X, hello. Do you have to close a parenthesis? Yeah. If you open, but if you don't have this, it'll say missing parenthesis to print. So oh, if you so it gives you a very specific error. Yeah, and it tells you exactly where the error is. Oh, so. that's nice. Yeah. So I will forget that about a million times before I finally do that forever. That's fine. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump into Wednesday, start with that, and then, because um, I got four minutes concatenating strings together. Uh, yeah, concatenation. He had a funny accent. Not a funny yes. accent, but it was just like, halfway through. Yes. Yes. it was weird. Oh, the head are we doing riddles halfway through the it still? Videos. 
Yes, they actually did just come out with a new one. Oh, yes. uh, like sometime yesterday that I saw. Oh. So we'll do that tomorrow. That's last semester, but I think it's the same time. So real quick, Ryan, sit down. Sorry. So concatenating string. So if I want to say, um, hello, Ryan. Hello. But I don't know Ryan's name. Oh, what the heck? Right, I go name is input. Ryan wrong? puts his in his name. Wouldn't it be raw? Oh, you don't have to do raw and put it. I don't have to do raw. So what then I could do is I could go print. Oh yeah. Hello. So, I'm gonna leave a space. That's what that line is for. Wait, why don't you just use plus? Or like plus. Or... Yeah, that's what I'm doing. But no, wasn't there one where you just automatically add the space? If you have a comma. Comma. Yeah, comma. So there's two different things you can do. Uh, you can concatenate strings together only if both things are a string. So if this was an int. I would get an error here saying I can't add a string and an int together. So then I would have to move this and do str. Isn't there a way that you could do that? Yeah, comma. Yeah, so what you do is you would then do hello, comma, name. And what that does is it puts a, um, it puts a space here. And what you can do is we're going to get through this after we get through the review. You can add stuff to the print and make this instead of it giving you a space you can have it do a new line or you can have it add a oh, wait, word you can add stuff to the actual print function yeah oh because it's a function now that's actually that's why they changed to a function that's like actually much more useful so and i can end this and with instead of a new line i can add five new lines so that every time it prints something you can it will do something else because like that makes a sense question yeah you passed me the marker so like in like the base python code like there is something that says like function Nice name, Ryan. Thanks, Dan. And then it's like, whatever, f, x, y. Is that and then it, it's like, that? it's like print, right? Like that's print. So then when you type print, it's essentially like you're calling that function. Yes. And then you're putting in the things you want to print. But it can be arbitrarily long, because I don't know how they did that up here, but they're smarter than I am. Yeah. That's so much more useful because then you can add yeah, stuff here that you couldn't add before. Yeah, so what if you want to do, I can actually show you guys in the next minute. Uh, I don't think I'm going to configure idle. <laughs> guys, sit down. I only got like... So I could do print. I just see something right there on your screen. Oh. Dang it, I'm gonna run out of time. No. So print hello. Bye. All right, so it's gonna do that. I can add comma end equals what's up, and it will add what's up to the end of it. And I can also go separator so instead of a comma it's now hello what's up bye so it adds that instead of so you can add a couple things oh, to print that's pretty cool um okay so we got through oh, hello.